Today we are going to talk about the structure of DNA. On your worksheets, on your paper that you have, you see it says structure of DNA at the top. Today we are going to talk about the way DNA is made. So what I want you to do is draw two lines, similar to here. And you can see the two lines, on the one line you draw a line and write monomer. And then you draw a line to the, to the right and write polymer. So what I want you to do is pause the video and draw the lines, the one line to the left, and then write monomer under it, and then draw one line to the right and write polymer under it. This is going to help you remember the, what DNA is made up of. So pause the video now and do it. Now that you've written those two things down, what I want you to do is look at these words closely. On the one hand, monomer. Underline the mono in monomer in one color and the mer in a different color. That way you know that the mono means something and the mer means something. In both cases, mer means parts. Mono, on the other hand, means one. So underneath mono, what I want you to write is the word one to help you remember that mono means one. So underneath the mono, write m one. It's similar to words like monotheism, which means one god, monochromatic, which, which means one color, and monopoly, which means one business dominating a market. So in the same way that all of those things mean one, monomer means one part of a whole. So it's just one part of your DNA. DNA is made up of many different parts, and the monomer, each monomer makes up one part of your DNA. Similarly, you can underline the word poly in one color and the word mer in another color. Mer, as we said before, means parts. Underneath poly, you can write the word many, because poly means many. For instance, polytheism means many gods. Polygraph means many graphs. And polygon means many sides. Polymer just remember that poly means many and mer means parts. So polymer means many parts. These are the basis, this is the basis for our understanding of DNA. So as we're studying these things, remember that the monomer is one part of the DNA and polymer are the many parts put together. Now each monomer is made up of something called a nucleotide. On your worksheet it says write, uh, draw a picture of a nucleotide below. Make sure to use different colors for the different shapes. So you're going to make a triangle for the phosphorus group, a circle for the deoxyribose group, and a, tr a rectangle for the nitrogen, uh, the nitrogen containing base. Let me zoom in on this so you can see them better. In the triangle you're going to color it whatever color you want to color it, and inside you're going to write phosphorus group. You can pause the video now if you're if you're uh, having trouble keeping up. Pause the video and write phosphorus groups in the triangle. And then draw a line to the circle and write deoxyribose sugar. Again, you can pause the video at any time if this is going too fast. Finally, you have the rectangle of the nitrogen containing base. These are the three parts that make up a nucleotide. Now, now, a nucleotide, if you want to see it visually, a nucleotide is a very small part of the DNA molecule. The DNA molecule has billions and billions of nucleotides in each DNA molecule. The next thing it asks you to do on your worksheet, and you can pause the video if I'm going too fast, it says write the four different DNA bases. So you're, you're going to draw four circles, and you're going to write the four types of DNA bases in each circle. It says color the single ring base is one color and the double ring base is another color. So you can see that the first two are the single are the single ring bases and the last two are the double ring bases. So color the first two one color and the second two another color. I'm going to zoom in on each one. Cytosine is the first one and it's represented by a C in DNA. You can pause the video if you need more time to write it down. The next one is thymine and it's symbolized by a T. You can pause the video if you need more time. Adenine is represented by an A, and guanine is represented by a G. 
This, and underneath cytosine and thymine, draw a little line and write single ring so that you can remember that these two bases are the single ring DNA bases. You can pause the video if you need more time. Similarly, draw a line around adenine and guanine and write double ring to remind us that these are the double ring bases. Again, pause the video now if you need more time. The next thing we're going to go over is the thinking map for thinking about DNA on the back side of your worksheet. The directions say draw the thinking map from the video on your paper so that you can study from it for the benchmark. So here is the DNA thinking map, thinking about DNA thinking map. I'm going to start with the very top net and then I'm going to do all organisms have some DNA first. Secondly, I'm going to do the 1950s Erwin Chargoff. And lastly, I'm going to do Watson and Crick. So the main head title of all of this stuff is called Thinking About DNA. That is going to go, you're going to make a circle at the very top of your paper, and you're going to write Thinking About DNA. And you're going to draw three lines, just like I did here. The first one is going to say all organisms have some DNA. The second line is going to say 1950s Erwin Chargoff. And the third one is going to say Watson and Crick. A long time ago, scientists thought that all organisms had the same DNA. But scientists also had a hard time trying to prove that this was true. So there are three parts for this old way of thinking about DNA. The first is that they thought all creatures had equal nucleotides in their DNA. Secondly, it was hard to convince scientists that this was true because it did not make sense. Why would all animals and all why would all animals and plants and everything living in the world have the same exact nucleotide DNA makeup and yet look so different? It did not make sense. In the 1950s there was a man named Ergen Chargaff. And he came up with three main ideas that we want to talk about. First, he found that there were four bases found in all organisms, like we talked about above. Secondly, he said that they are not found in equal proportions. A proportion is, for instance, if you eat a big lunch, that is a big portion. If you eat a small lunch, that is a small portion. What Chargaff was saying was that not all animals and plants and living things have equal proportions of DNA. Some people might have more of the A base, some people might have more of the G base, some people might have more of the C base, and so on. Okay? So he said that it is not found in equal proportions. And lastly, he said that however many A bases you have, you will have the same amount of T bases. Secondly, he said, however many C bases you have, you will have the same amount of G bases. So as of right now, you should have the top, the very top rung filled in. Let me go backwards a little bit and let's, and let's make sure we have everything written down that we're supposed to have written down. So by now, you should have the thinking about DNA finished, and we should have done all organisms have the same DNA with those three circles and those three circles. And lastly, now we're going to do Watson and Crick. Now, these guys are extremely famous for their, dis for their discovery of the double helix model in DNA. They thought that DNA would look like a helix. A helix is kind of like a spiral. It spirals and spirals and spirals, like a spiral staircase. And what they found was that they created the double helix model. And they thought that it looked like a, they thought it looked like a twisted ladder. So those are the three things that you need to know about Watson and Crick.